Hey friends, so in this video, I'm going to be telling you the harsh realities behind nuclear engineering undergraduate program. Yeah, so nuclear engineering, it's not a walk in the park. Uh, it's a pretty challenging program, although I love encouraging people to go study nuclear engineering undergrad because the industry is rising. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of huge growth across the world, not only in Canada, but in different parts of the world, uh, they're embracing nuclear. We're gonna be talking about everything like course difficulty. How hard are these courses actually? Time commitment, can you balance a part-time job with studying nuclear engineering? Is that even possible? And then we're also a deep dive into like the time commitment. Like what does it look like? What does your nine to five or nine to nine studying look like? Uh, so we're going to deep dive into all of that. If you're new to my channel, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering. And on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. And so let's start off with the course quantity. Okay, so nuclear engineering undergrad uh, from Ontario Tech University. Um, the course that I took, it has six courses every single semester until you graduate. Yeah, so there's four years and there's two semesters per year and you have six courses each. And so at the time, I didn't really uh, understand when I was enrolling in this program, but every single course is more difficult than that of a high school course. So in high school, regular kids take four courses per semester. And now the transition from high school to university is going from four courses to six courses. It's not only the course content, but it's also a lot of the things that take place on the side. There's assignments, there's uh, labs, okay? So these are in-person laboratories that take place where you have to do experiments, la write lab reports, work in groups, coordinate all of that. But also there's tutorials. So tutorials focused on doing a lot of a lot of self-study and focusing on other parts of and focusing on other parts of the curriculum where the professor simply doesn't have enough time in the lecture to do. So a teaching assistant will do a secondary lecture in order to just teach you a lot of the concepts that there wasn't enough time to go through in the lecture alone. On top of that, you're reviewing textbooks for more content and supplementary studies or supplementary readings that you have to do. Uh, and of course, this is all dependent on the course. Number one is the quantity of courses is it's like a lot. And a lot of the courses that you're gonna take are very heavy lift courses, okay? So even if you look back at another video that I made where I rank every single courses according to difficulty, you'll see that a lot of the courses are actually in the A rank, which is right below the S rank, the most difficult courses. So nuclear engineering undergrad not only has a lot of courses, but it also has very difficult courses that are paired up with them. Uh, this is what makes this program challenging. A question that I get very often is, can you do a part-time job while studying? And right now, for fair reasons, there's a huge economic disaster, right? A lot of students right now are not getting the right student loans or support from family members. And so they're forced into doing a lot of part-time jobs. The unfortunate situation is that that takes away from your studies. One question that I get pretty often is, can you do a part-time job while studying nuclear engineering undergrad as a full-time student? The simple answer is no, right? It's very challenging. I would not recommend it. However, it's not impossible. I've seen people do it and I don't know how, but they somehow do it, maybe sacrificing sleep, sacrificing their health, but there's ways to do it. You can do it on a very part-time basis, maybe. However, it's not encouraged. I remember while my undergrad, it's a constant hamster wheel, right? You're barraged by just lectures and being at school all the time, while at the same time, you're having to, having to self-study, right? Like go to the library and just camp out there, um, studying from, from all the way till 12 p.m. I remember every single day, just the, the hour would tick where the library would close at, uh, at 12, uh, and 12 a.m. And so that was it, like you wrap up the, for the night and then you go home uh, to sleep. So yeah, it's a consistent hamster wheel. There's a lot of uh, group work, right? You're working with your colleagues, you're studying with your colleagues, uh, you're figuring out what works best for you. And so usually it's a combination of all three things, but 
So yeah, I would not recommend doing a part-time job if you wanna be successful um, in this undergrad and kind of pass all your courses. Uh, so that's my recommendation. All right, so what is the average GPA of a nuclear engineering student? All right, so surprisingly, the average GPA at the time uh, that I was an undergrad for all undergraduate students in engineering was a 2.3 GPA, okay? And that's a pretty, it's a pretty standard GPA. And the reason why is because uh, it's challenging, right? So 2.3 out of a 4.3 GPA, all right? Uh, nuclear engineering undergraduate, uh, when I was studying, this may be completely different now, relatively had a higher GPA as compared to others. It just, that's just the type of students this program usually attracts. They're a lot more studious. They're more ambitious. They actually care. They've done a lot of research into the industry. And so for nuclear engineering undergrad, you'll find that the GPAs are usually a little bit higher. Now let's co compare the course difficulty when it comes to other programs like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. Um, nuclear is significantly more difficult and you may call me biased, uh, the, but I'm really not. The reason why is because although there's a lot of overlap, there's a lot of courses that, that nuclear engineers take uh, as compared to mechanical and electrical engineers, uh, such as thermodynamics, heat transfer, uh, fluid mechanics, those are challenging courses. However, with nuclear engineering courses, there's a few reasons why they're a little bit more difficult. Number one is that you can simply go on Chegg or other websites online and find solutions to your problems, right? So if you're having a lot of difficulty, you can chat GPT it. But when it comes to nuclear engineering, a lot of the courses are very, very niche. There's simply not as much information online about the discipline about those courses as compared to mechanical or electrical engineering, right? So number one, there simply isn't as many resources to really investigate and get information from and learn from. Number two is a lot of nuclear engineering courses are physics-based concepts, which you cannot easily visualize. So when it comes to mechanical or electrical engineering, it's easy to visualize circuits. It's easy, easy to visualize mechanics of components, However, when it comes to physics, um, that becomes a little bit more tricky, right? It's uh, how do you visualize those concepts? How do you compare those concepts to anything that you've studied before in the past? And so jumping into something that's so new and so fresh, it really takes people back a bit, right? So um, that's another reason why things become a little bit more complex. The, the last reason why is because over the years, you're building layer upon layer, right? So you're starting with calculus, just, you're studying linear algebra, you're you're taking thermodynamics, you're taking fluid dynamics. And, and so if you don't have a strong understanding of all of those courses, it's difficult to get to the next course. That's why prerequisites are important. But another reason why is it's important to actually s s to pay attention in class and, s and start from the first basis of principles. And so what, what makes the program difficult is that it's kind of layer upon layer, you're building up to taking those very difficult courses. And so what happens is, say in first or second year, you weren't the best at calculus. Well, that's the foundation of all that you're studying. Now, it's just gonna become more difficult for you because you have to go back four or five courses and relearn everything. Yeah, the incremental learning curve is, is another challenge in itself. The next challenge that I would say that a lot of students face is failing a course, right? So. Uh, when you fail a course, unfortunately, uh, it's tricky because if you look at course maps, there's every other course requires you to have a prerequisite. Okay, so prerequisites mean, like I said, um, building up those courses. So what happens a lot of the times is in nuclear engineer undergrad or any other undergraduate program, there are gatekeeper courses. Okay, gatekeeper courses are the most challenging courses S level rank, you can check them out in my video, like I said. And so these courses make it very difficult for you to progress to the next year, right? It's not necessarily by design, but it's just by how the course in itself is. And so what happens is you're, if you fail one course in one year, okay, first year you may get away with it because a lot of first year courses are offered in the summer, right? But when it comes to second or third and fourth year, it's difficult because now you have to repeat the entire year. 
you find a lot of undergraduate students, um, the challenge is that they may fail a course in second or third year, fourth year, and their course, their university, the university doesn't really offer any, um, any summer courses. And so it's very difficult for them to get back on track. You'll, you'll see a lot of folks that are in hybrid between second and third year or between third and fourth year. And so it becomes a very tricky situation, especially because you know, you're paying extra for that extra year. You know, are you just gonna take that one course that you failed or are you gonna repeat a few others to increase your GPA, right? You'll find people do that as well. They take an extra year just to get that GPA up. And um, all right, so this video may seem a bit pessimistic just because I'm talking about a lot of the challenges. I'm giving you a heads up as to, it's not all waterfalls and rainbows, right? It's, it's a challenging course. It's a challenging degree to get, but it's worth it. Um, what can you do to make your life easier? Well, number one is learn time management, right? There's a really good book that I'd recommend. It's called Getting Things Done, right? It's a, it's a, a step-by-step a way to uh, learn project management and just make sure you optimize your whole life, your life, your academic life, uh, you know, your cooking routines, your laundry, everything, right? And so I'd recommend that that book uh, for you guys to read in your leisure time, uh, but also as be strategic, take summer school, right? Um, summer school is a great time for you to catch up. What I did during my summer school was actually a fast track, right? Fast track a lot of my courses, got them out of the way, right? And what it did was it allowed me to not be overburdened by 666 courses all throughout my undergrad. Rather, I had course loads of like five courses throughout my undergrad after that. So just taking that summer school, you know, three or four courses, it makes a huge difference, even if you're getting electives out of the way. Yeah, so the next thing that I would recommend is be strategic in the courses you take, right? So I think there's a mandatory courses that you have to take but there's also the electives, right? There's engineering electives that you can take. I remember engineering electives are supposed to be a little bit easier than the traditional courses, but I remember friends taking electives that were so difficult. Um, they were just as difficult as any of, any of the courses. And so I was really happy because I chose, I chose the right electives. So remember, do your research, talk to the upper years, network, come out to networking events and really chat with them, talk to them, uh, it's worth it, right? It's worth your time. It's gonna make your life easier. Um, be strategic with those courses, right? Um, all right, so last but not least, um, this is a unique program. Uh, I really did love it going back. And remember, like I'm talking about challenges, I'm talking about how difficult the program is, but no matter what, if you enjoy what you're doing, you're gonna love it, right? Remember that. Um, you're, you know, I chose nuclear engineering because I had a passion for physics. I had a passion for sciences. Um, I wasn't the traditional engineer who loved cars and fast, you know, fast machines. Um, I was more of the, hey, like I'm interested in this technology and let's, let's figure it out, right? And so when I did nuclear, it just opened up a whole new world, right? You're, you're learning nuclear reactor kinetics. You're learning radiation science. You're doing research papers on um, on Chernobyl and the health effects, uh, you're, uh, you're looking at uh, nuclear plant operations, right? Fascinating subjects. And so the more I went deeper into the subject, course difficulty did increase, definitely. But it was, became even more and more interesting. First year is difficult uh, because you're really getting into the university energy, the university vibe. Everyone's pretty much first year or all engineering undergrads is pretty much very similar. It's pretty much the same. But for me, second, third, and fourth year were challenging, but the challenges came with more interest, right? More practicality, more application. And when you come back every year after your internship, you have so much more experience to connect that, uh, that theoretical knowledge to. So um, yeah, this video, I wanna inspire you. I still wanna motivate you to study what you wanna study, especially if you're looking into nuclear engineering. However, know that it's a challenging program. It's not a walk in the park, um, but, it gets more and more fun the more you do it. So um, there you have it. Um, there's a little bit of a video. There's a little bit of a rambly rant on some of the challenges that you may face if you want to continue studying nuclear engineering. Uh, well, there you have it. Hope you enjoy this video and hope you get a chance to check out some of my other videos, a series on nuclear engineering that I produced. Um, I made a lot of videos for students that are looking to get into this discipline because I feel like in the future, this is gonna be the most, uh, it's gonna be a discipline that's gonna be saturated for sure. 
So hope you enjoyed this video. Until then, take care. Bye.